Hello everyone, my name is Katherine Tuttle and I am the pastor of Wilbur Community Church in Wilbur, Washington. This video you're watching is a part of our ongoing series on contemplative prayer practices. Today's topic is the Jesus Prayer and it's one of my personal favorites so I'm so glad you are joining me here today. Let's go ahead and get started. Thank you again for being here with me whenever you're watching this video. I would like to start by just checking in with you and, and how you're doing, how you're processing this COVID-19 crisis, what's been helpful for you, what's been hard for you. Let me know in the comments below how you're doing. Uh, today's practice is uh, based on the Jesus Prayer. And this is one of my favorite prayer practices. It's something that I do probably every day, if not if not multiple times a day. And it's very simple, like many of the other prayer practices we've gone over in this series. It's not something you need special equipment for, you don't need special books for, you can do it at home, you can do it when you're walking. Uh, it's very, very easy in some ways and very challenging in other ways, um, but very accessible to really anyone. And that's what I love about it. So you can kind of see a theme forming with these, these prayer practices and, and prayers that I use in my life and, and ones that I gravitate towards. So let's start just by uh, doing a little bit of history on where this prayer comes from. Uh, it's rooted in scripture. It comes out of uh, a story out of Mark chapter 10, uh, verse 47 with uh, the blind Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus cries out to God. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And so that's really at the heart of this prayer is, is those words. And there's been different translations of that uh, and different interpretations of that. So when I say this prayer, I tend to say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Uh, another book I was reading said by Dan Wolpert, uh, Creating a Life with God, he says, Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me, or Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So there's lots of different variations you can do, and if you look into this, you'll find lots of different variations, but it's always centered on Jesus and mercy. And if you didn't catch my uh, my Easter service, which I think is episode seven, uh, it's very centered on mercy. I've been thinking a lot about mercy lately because it's something that I feel I need so much of. And during this COVID-19 crisis, something I think our neighbors need so much of. And so anything I can do in my, my devotional life to be pondering the nature of mercy is something that I, I really want to be engaging with right now. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments below. So anyway, this, this Jesus prayer comes out of this story in Mark. And it was used by uh, Eastern Orthodox monks uh, for centuries. Uh, we don't really have a lot of the history of, of how it started and who used it, but we do know that it became more popular in the late 19th century after the work The Way of the Pilgrim was published. And it was published by an unknown Russian, and it goes over this, this prayer practice and, and how this person used this prayer practice in their life and the different, um, how it really transformed them. And for me, what I have found to be most transformative about this prayer is that it really calls us to proclaim Jesus as our, our Lord and Savior and to call attention to our own need for mercy. And uh, I grew up Catholic, as many of you know, and so repetitive prayers come pretty naturally to me. And this is a lot like our centering prayer that we did, I think, in our first midweek episode, the centering prayer, where you use a word or a phrase repetitively to bring you back to a place of, of stillness and attention to God. And this is like that in some ways with the repetition. 
um, but it's a little bit different because it's more of a continuous repetition. So uh, let me just explain a little bit about how I use it in, in my life and that might be helpful. So I will be out on a walk and I will just repeat to myself over and over again, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me a sinner. And I'll just repeat that for as long as I need to, uh, just to really remind myself of the presence of God, my own need for mercy, and to be paying attention to how God is speaking to me in my life. It's also a prayer that I do at home with my, my family. Many of you know that I have young children at home. And so again, getting out a book is not something that's really conducive to prayer in my in my home life right now so something that i can do in, in just in my mind is is very beneficial for me so when i'm holding my babies i can be saying this prayer when i'm doing dishes or laundry i can be saying this prayer it's something that that really calls us to to pray without ceasing which is another scriptural reference to really be thinking of how our our daily work our daily labors and our prayer life can be intertwined together. And so uh, that's kind of that's kind of the Jesus prayer in a nutshell. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode this week. And so I'm curious if this is something that, that you've heard of or not heard of. Let me know in the comments below if this is a part of your practice already. I would love to hear about your interpretations of how to do the Jesus prayer. Um, I think I, I mentioned that there are challenges with this too. Uh, like so many contemplative prayer practices, there's this easy component and then there's a component that's very challenging and that's when we encounter ourselves in the midst of prayer or in the midst of silence and we come face to face with our, our fears, our, our petty grievances, our, our self-centered preoccupations, our wounds, all of that kind of all of that kind of stuff that we tune out with with our work and our our hobbies and our our activities during the day that kind of dull that that awareness of our own brokenness our own sinfulness our own struggles or our own grief sometimes it's not even about our own sinfulness it's just about wounds that we have wounds that we carry with us. And when we're in periods of silence, we can come face to face with these wounds. And that's another reason why I wanted to do this contemplative prayer series with you is because even if you're not practicing contemplative prayer at home, just being at home as much as we all have been this last month, you may have encountered parts of yourself that you are uncomfortable with, parts of yourself that is painful to face for a variety of different reasons. And so prayers like this can be both challenging because we face that in those moments of silence, but they can also be really healing because we are reminded that God is dwelling with us in those painful spaces. And and again, that's another reason why the Jesus prayer for me is a personal favorite, because it does draw attention to that need for mercy and that call for God's mercy in our lives. So when I am kind of holding up that mirror in front of myself and I, I'm just seeing all of the, the brokenness and wounds of my life, all of my, my failures and pettiness, to be reminded that I need God's mercy is um, is something I never get tired of. And that's a reason why I say this prayer almost daily uh, of all the prayer practices this is um, this is definitely one that I go to the most the the author I mentioned earlier Dan Wolpert in creating a life with God he says that he likes to say this prayer when he can't sleep at night and I thought that that was that was a really good idea it's not something I do that sometimes I suppose but uh, there's lots of different places and ways that you can be using this prayer to remind yourself of God's presence in the midst of, of difficulty. So let me know in the comments below 
where you could see yourself using this prayer. Let me know if this is something that is helpful for you. Uh, just try it out this week. Just give it a go. Uh, maybe the language, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner, is, is too long for you or, or doesn't fit in with your own spirituality. So maybe something simpler, Jesus have mercy. Jesus have mercy. Jesus have mercy on me. Something like that. Just try that out as a, as a repetitive tool in your prayer life while you're, you're walking around or while you're doing your chores, or while you're going about your day, to enter into a space of prayer without ceasing. And I would love to hear how that goes for you this week, and what joys and struggles you might encounter with that. Know that you are not alone at home, that God is with you, and that your community continues to pray for you, and that I love you, and I am here for you, reach out with any questions or concerns that you might have. I will be posting another video this Sunday on the, I think it's the Road to Emmaus this Sunday. So we'll be talking more about mercy and discovery and journeys with God. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Stay home, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. <music>